and they're kicking to him. That right there is an upset. Suter's not going to fair catch it. And he goes down. A great punt by Brady. Ball is loose, but well after the whistle. A terrific hang time punt by Brady. Jay Henry making the stop. Good coverage by the Mountaineers as the dangerous Steve Suter is stopped. Lost a couple of yards on that punt return attempt. The Maryland will start from its own seven. Pin back for its second possession of the game. So we've had a lot of action so far, but no scoring. We'll be right back. Terps have the ball. Maryland gets the ball for the second time in this game. Their first play resulted in a fumble by Josh Allen that West Virginia recovered. Joel Statham is a first-year starter for Maryland, and he is hearing it from these West Virginia fans. They give the ball right back to Allen, and Allen, who fumbled on his first attempt, gets nothing, no gain on his second. Let's take a look at the Terrapin skill players. Two years ago, Josh Allen had a breakout game here at West Virginia, his first career 100-yard game when he filled in for the injured Bruce Perry. Steve Suter, very, very dangerous. Terrapins have a huge offensive line. Senior C.J. Brooks has started every game of his career. Andrew Crummy gets the start just a freshman on the right side. Russell Bonham is out today, got a concussion during practice on Thursday. So Crummy, a youngster, gets the start. Second and 10, Statham's first pass. Oh, that's a dangerous pass and is picked off. Adam Pac-Man Jones, the big play guy, makes his second big play of the game already. And West Virginia will have it first and goal. That's not a way to start off in your first road game. Joel Statham forced that ball down the field. Adam Pac-Man Jones is just playing center field. They want max protect. They only put two receivers out in the particular route, forced it into coverage. Jones reads the quarterback side the whole way, gets to the sideline, finds his blockers. Big turnaround for West Virginia. Oh, boy, Statham, that was just a terrible decision to even make that throw. There were at least three blue jerseys around the intended receiver. Pac-Man, the leading tackler on this team, now has his first interception of the season. First and goal from the seven for the Mountaineers. K.J. Harris gets it, and the big power back goes into the end zone. West Virginia strikes first. That's a long time coming for these Mountaineer fans. Getting on the scoreboard first was very pivotal for this team. In the last four games against the Turks, they got into huge holes against them. And getting that first score, as you mentioned, and that's got to be good for the West Virginia fans to see K.J. Harris with that sore hand able to come in. Looked like a good burst there and a lot of power to get into the end zone. So Brad Cooper to make it 7 to nothing, And the Mountaineers doing exactly what they wanted to do. It was a little crazy getting to this point, <laughs> but they score first. Fifth touchdown of the year already for K.J. Harris. The Mountaineers up 7 to nothing. Brought to you by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And Circuit City. Check us out at circuitcity.com. K.J. Harris has scored on a seven-yard touchdown run set up by Pac-Man Jones interception and 21-yard return. First time that Maryland has trailed West Virginia since September 16th of 2000. That was the last time Maryland lost to West Virginia. Four straight games. Four straight losses, and this is the first time West Virginia's had the lead. Brad Cooper kicking it off, a short kickoff that is taken by JoJo Walker, one of the up man, and he fumbles it, but that at least goes out of bounds. Crazy game here. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam. Getting a little crazier than maybe the Wolverines would like in Ann Arbor. Already up 7-0. Chad Henney looking for more, but he never saw. Oh, boy, he just got hammered. Antoine Applewhite collects it for the INT. He's going to take it back all the way to the 3. A holding penalty brought it back to the 13, but the Aztecs cashed in nonetheless and have tied it up at 7 apiece. Well, Michigan offense struggled big time last week. Tied up against San Diego State. Maryland has run three plays and has two turnovers. They're down 7-0. Statham threw an interception last time out. Gives it to Sammy Maldonado. 
and he gets maybe a yard. Maldonado is a transfer from Ohio State. Let's take a look at this West Virginia defense. Nose tackle Ben Lynch, one of the leaders of the Mountaineers. He is back after sitting out last week with a strained shoulder. Scott Jerko was not recruited by a single Division 1A team. The Morgantown native has gone from walk-on to starter. And Adam Pacman Jones has already shown you what a big play guy he is with the 21 yard interception return. He also had a kickoff return of over 45 yards. And this is bad news for the Terrapins is Andrew Crummy, who started only because Russell Bonham is hurt. Crummy is being helped off the field. Freshman from Van Wert, Ohio. They can't afford to lose any interior offensive linemen. You know, Kyle Schmidt and CJ Brooks are the two studs up front. Not much depth when he travels to these away games. And especially, as we mentioned, Bonham is out. He suffered a concussion, a mild concussion on Thursday, but they were hoping that they would not have to use him. He missed last week with a hamstring injury. Joel Statham, again, making his first road start of his very young career. First year starter for the Turks. He threw a very costly interception on his first pass today. Only pass so far. His second pass is, oh, Jerko coming in. And they're saying it's an incomplete pass, but boy, Scott Jerko, we talked about him, the walk-on, nobody wanted him. Rich Rodriguez said, come here, I'll give you the best chance, and he's made the most of his opportunity. Well, he's a hometown hero, number 33. Jerko, nobody blocks him. He should get to the quarterback. That's how you introduce yourself to that young quarterback, Joel Statham. How are you doing today, sir? <laughs> Boom. That's a pin, that's a turf monster pin. One, two, three, but Stadium gets back up for a big third down. And that was indeed ruled an incomplete pass, so third and nine for Maryland. And this crowd, which has been waiting four years to beat the Terps, is fired up. Pressure up the middle, Stadium gets it away, and the receiver, Derek Fenner, was locked up with the defensive back as it goes, falls incomplete. Pam, there's no rhythm at all by the Maryland offense. Stadium is looking left, looking right. He had an errant throw for the initial interception. There was no timing in that comeback route. Settle him down a little bit. You got an experienced offensive line. Try to get that running game going. The Stadium, who the Maryland coaches said made terrific strides in last week's win over Temple compared to Northern Illinois when he fumbled the ball four times in week one, has been a little shaky so far today. Adam Podlish gets it off. Pac-Man. Picks it up on the bounce, and his knees hit. So at least he didn't hurt Maryland that time, as West Virginia will take over after that 50-yard punt. Last week, Notre Dame upset Michigan and South Bend. Tonight, Darius Walker and the Irish look to build on it when they meet Michigan State. 6.55 Eastern time on ESPN. Then at 10 Eastern, Matt Leinart and the number one ranked USC Trojans visit BYU. Notre Dame, Michigan State also available in high definition on ESPN HD. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Walker, what a great game. 115 yards on 31 carries against Michigan. I don't think anybody thought Notre Dame could win that game, and now their whole season is turning around. This is a very winnable game today against Michigan State. Well, there were a lot of guys in that locker room who thought they could, and they went out and did it. So West Virginia taking over on the nine. K.J. Harris showing that his hammy is okay. Let's go back down to Dave Ryan. Dave. Pam, it looks like he is doing very well. We meant to mention top of the broadcast that K.J. underwent aggressive therapy for the hamstring Tackle injury this week. Five times a day, starting at 6.30 in the morning every day. That therapy went late into last night at the team hotel and early this morning. It was upgraded from about 70% effective to 85 to 90 by the trainers. K.J.'s got a lot of confidence. Looks like he's playing much less much less pain, more pain-free now. Yeah, David, you're right. That confidence factor was what the coaches were most concerned about. Oh, that's almost picked off. Garrick McPherson stepped in front of it, and if he would have been able to get that baby, that would have been a that would have been a touchdown for the Terps. But uh, KJ Harris again. It, the coaches were concerned, and, and the doc, the team doctor we spoke to yesterday said that he couldn't hurt it any worse by playing today. It was just a matter of Harris believing it. Well, if the running game's going well, you might as well go out to the perimeter. And Try to get Chris Henry involved. You gotta have better ball location in order for Henry to catch that pass. And McPherson again, the fastest player on this Maryland squad. Runs about a 4-2-9-40. And Harris, that time is bottled up as we take you back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pat. We take you to Blacksburg. Duke in town after narrowly missing a field goal that would have won them a road game last week. 
Dion Adams on the end around 28 yards, and the Blue Devils have an early lead on Virginia Tech, 7-0. All right, Matt, back here, fourth and very short, and obviously this far back, they're going to punt. Maybe not, obviously, but they're going to do it. Phil Brady coming in. Kicked a 34-yarder last time out. Steve Suter on his own 48-yard line, waiting for the punt. Angle punts are a premium right here. Kicking no into a play. nice breeze. That whistles down. The delay of game against West Virginia. The snap, the left game, 38 on the kicking team. It's a five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And there's much reason for West Virginia to fear Steve Suter. In the Gator Bowl, he took one back for a touchdown. That was on New Year's Day. That was a 76-yarder in a 41-7 win. Two years ago here, he also took one back for a touchdown. For more on Suter, let's go down to Dave Ryan. Plain and simple, Steve Suter is fearless, man. He tells us he will never take a fair catch. Hasn't taken one in his career, and he's always sure with that kind of confidence and courage that he'll hold up against everything. Now, he also holds up against severe knee injuries. He's had six knee surgeries in his career. Never knows if a cut or a move will tweak the injury. The Maryland trainers told me before the game, imagine walking 24-7 with a rock in your shoe. That's the kind of pain Steve Suter is in. And it is amazing. He is, his speed seems to be down a little bit, but you know a guy who's never taken a fair catch in his life? He's not going to let a six knee injury stop him from playing. Let alone a stone in your shoe. Sammy Maldonado gets the carry, only picks up about one. Suter had that 80-yard punt return for a touchdown here back in 2002, and he's a, another impressive student from Maryland as he has already graduated. Yeah, Coach, Coach Friedman just loves his character athlete here. He's been a leader all four years, just a warrior. No fair catches, rocks and shoes, bad knees. He just tapes it up, straps it on, goes to work. In fact, he had a GPA, grade point average of 4.0 last year. Maryland's offense, a, G, a GPA of about 0.0 .0 so far. Seven plays, three yards, two turnovers. Second and nine. And that ball is tipped and almost picked off. Pac-Man almost had his second. Adam Lenort, the linebacker, able to get his hands on it. Boy, Pac-Man's Pac thinking one, that one got away. Starts at the line of scrimmage. Defenders are getting their hands up. Tipping the ball. Adam Jones reacting after the throw. He's just a ball hawk. He knows where the football is. He's got great instincts. Always moving towards the goal line. First name is Adam, but nobody calls him that. Pac-Man is his nickname. Apparently because he really knew how to attack a bottle when he was a baby. He loves the game, too. <laughs> he loves the game Pac-Man. And he plays, he plays football like it, too. He's always trying to devour folks. West Virginia sends a lot of people, and finally Maryland completes a pass, a nifty reception for Rich Parson, and the Terps have their first first down. Well-executed play on both sides of the football. They're bringing that zone blitz by the West Virginia defense. They do a nice job picking up. Parson is hurt. His trainer Sandy Worth in the red shirt helping him. Boy, Parson with a very painful first down catch. Looks like I got a helmet right in the back by the kidney. First and 10 for the Terps on the 33. Maldonado standing behind Statham. No play action. Maldonado with a good block, but Statham runs out of time. And he gets hit high and is tackled down. Pac-Man, Jones coming in. And you see uh, Schmidt for Maryland taking exception. That's Kyle Schmidt, the center, one of the leaders of this Terrapin team, going right up to Pac-Man and talking to him about that high hit. We talked about the rivalry in the open. I mean, this is more than rivalry. This is bragging rights. Statement game. Statham does a nice job. Sometimes he stays in the pocket a little bit too much. He identifies the receivers not open down the field. Tucks the ball and tries to get positive yards. Second and five, as he was able to get five positive yards on that play. Now out of the shotgun. But they run out of it as Sammy Maldonado gets the first down for the Terps. 
So Maldonado, his first career 100 game last week, had that against Temple, 18 carries for 106 yards, picks up the first down for Ralph Regan, like Rich Rodriguez. He 